Have you ever seen a movie that ended with a surprising twist? Or have you ever thought you were certain you knew how a situation, a business deal, a conversation was going to work out, but it totally flipped? Hey, Dosters, my name is Brett Sterk, and I have the privilege of working at the Carlsbad campus in women's ministry. Today, we are in Exodus, the second book of the Bible, and we're looking at the early life of Moses. Powerful edicts and cultural norms should have dictated Moses' life. However, God changed the situation to use an insignificant person to fulfill his plan. Let's start in Exodus chapter 1. We're going to dip in and out of verses for the sake of time, but here's the setup. So there's a new king in Egypt, and he does not like the Israelites because they are increasing in number way too fast. He's worried that if they become too many, they will take over and turn against him. So let's start in verse 11. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They made their lives bitter with harsh labor. So basically, Pharaoh, who's the king of Egypt, thinks that working the Israelites without mercy is going to slow down their multiplication. But surprisingly, they are still growing in number. So Pharaoh decides to do something else about it. He tells the midwives in verse 16, when you are helping the Hebrew women during childbirth, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. Well, good news, the midwives don't do what Pharaoh wants. So Pharaoh comes up with yet another plan. In verse 22, it says, then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Every boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. So at this point in the story, Moses hasn't even been born yet, but you can see what the Israelites were going through. They were enslaved, worked tirelessly, and Pharaoh wanted to end these people. In Exodus chapter 2, Moses is born, and verse 3 says, But when she, Moses' birth mother, could hide him no longer, because remember, he was supposed to have been drowned at birth in the Nile River, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. She placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent the female slaves to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. Verse 10, when the child grew older, he was taken to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses saying, I drew him out of the water. All right. Let's stop there. Have you caught all the ways that according to culture and law, Moses' life should have gone? Israelite babies were supposed to be killed at birth by their midwives. Israelite babies were supposed to be drowned in the Nile River. Israelites were meant for a life of hard labor, maybe even meant to be worked to death, but Moses was saved from those things. Moses was rescued by Pharaoh's daughter out of the Nile River. He did not become a tirelessly worked slave, but an Egyptian nobleman. We see that God had a plan for Moses' life that for that day and time was unimaginable. He had a very big picture plan. We, however, we can have a very tiny pinhole view of God's plan and what he is doing in our lives and the lives of others. That pinhole view can make us doubt God, and the enemy can catch hold of that doubt and run rampant. We forget these stories of how God moved, how God changed circumstances to do his will, to hear the cry of his people and rescue them from their oppressors. This recount of Moses' life shows us that God can change our story in ways we can never imagine. I'm going to say that again. God can change your story in ways you can never imagine. We must not limit God with what we see in front of us, what we think we know. Our perspective can be shaped by culture, by law, by history, and prejudice. But God's word says, His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Instead of trying to figure out the why of why things aren't working out how we think, we must look to who we trust at the driver's seat of our lives. Who is the one that changed the direction and outcome of Moses' life? Who is the one that changed the direction of your life? Who was the one that saw you at your worst, your broken self, and brought you into a new life, raised you out of the depths of sin? Who made you whole? Jesus, that's who. Out of all this, the question today is, are you trusting God with the situation you're in? If you are, Moses' story shows us that God can use the most unlikely circumstances to do his will through his ways and his timing. Let's focus on who God is and remember Moses, not as the suffering, enslaved, oppressed Israelite, but the rescued Egyptian nobleman who God eventually uses to free a whole people group from the most powerful grips of royalty. God can truly make a way where we see no way. Let's live our lives with that trust and belief in him. Have a great day, dosers. We'll see you next time.